Yo, what up? How you guys doing out there today? This is your boy Roto Beast. I'm here with my boy Jeremy. We're going to present you our NFL Thursday Showdown for week two. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to click the subscribe button below. This way you can watch all of our NFL, NBA, and MLB videos. And if you haven't came and checked out our website here at DFSCheatSheet.com, you're absolutely missing out. We have all the tools to help you compete with the pros day in and day out, including a complete optimizer, tons of content, daily Fando and DraftKings cash times, and we truly a one-stop shop for all your DFS needs. So make sure to come check out the site here at DFSCheatSheet.com. So hey, what up, Jeremy? How you doing out there, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, bro. Tonight, to be honest with you, bad night of uh, MLB for me. Had a bunch of courts filled, and that didn't end up working out. But um, football, yeah, I'm looking forward to it this weekend. So that's kind of where my focus you know, is going right now. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, we got we got a Thursday slate. They got some money out there. Nine dollar entry on Fanduel, million dollar guaranteed, uh, two hundred to first place. Pretty good tournament, you know. Definitely want to throw in a couple of lineups and just you know have a little fun on Thursday night. I'm not really too much into the Thursday through Monday type slates, but um, this one could be a lot of fun. A lot of money up for grabs, so somebody got to win it. Um, so I'm ready to talk the game, kind of. You know, we got a couple of teams that. Um, you know, are coming off losses. You got the Bucks going into Carolina. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You got the Bucks going into Carolina and face Cam Newton. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's talk some football. Anything to talk about before we jump into this game? Any news, etc. cetera? Um, wanna say, man, they just feel really bad. Heard the news about um, Cleveland's uh player Chris Smith. I've got a, his lady got into an accident today and passed away. So, you know, rest in peace. And um, yeah, that that's crazy, man. Can't even can't even fathom the situation that took place. So, according to the Browns, they were in his they were in his Lamborghini. He was driving. Lamborghini blew a tire. His girlfriend got out of the car unscathed from the accident, only to be hit by an oncoming car and killed. So, it I mean I could can't even imagine losing somebody like that in your life, let alone right in front of you. The guy has to feel absolutely devastated and helpless. Very tragic. Just a just a tough deal, but I'm sure he's got you know. Unfortunately, that's what we're in is you got to you know everybody's got to move forward. So we'll move forward. Thoughts and prayers yeah. to him. Hey man, I'm ready to jump in this week. Um, you know, football football started off good. I'm ready to keep it rolling. Um, so we're gonna talk about the games. You know, like I said, Tampa Bay going into Carolina. I'll let you get us started with the uh, visitor side of things. And I mean, what do you think about Tampa Bay in this matchup? It'll be contrarian. It'll be, it'll be contrarian. I mean, no, we're talking. We're talking more just like you know, if you're it'll be con- the- it'll be contrarian. It'll be contrarian. The, the chalk is gonna ride on. I mean, look. Do you really think that? that people are going to load up Jameis Winston in their MVP spot, it'll be contrarian. The guy, three, he threw three interceptions and lost two fumbles. He was responsible for five turnovers. I said going into the week on our video last week, going into this game against San Francisco, that I love their defense because all he's done consistently in his career is turn the football over. Um, right. Tampa Bay needs to draft a quarterback, man. I, I just think it's time. I, I think that there's a lot of drama that comes with Jameis Winston. I, I think that, From a football standpoint, setting protections, taking care of the football and getting rid of the football on time. Don't get don't get me wrong. The guy's got a ton of talent, but he's not big man on campus at Florida State anymore. He's just not. He he needs to he needs to be an NFL quarterback. And I don't know if he can do that. We will find out as the season unfolds. But I definitely think one way or the other that Tampa Bay needs to draft a quarterback either to sit for a minute and and let Jameis kind of play this out or just completely move on from Jameis. And we talk about it all the time with different sports. Sometimes people just need a change of scenery, man. I, I know it's one game and that's the, the knee-jerk reaction, but this has been him for his career in the NFL. He turns the football over. He's got a lot of talent. So Jameis Winston, it'll be contrarian. I mean, Cam Newton is the quarterback that I think people will play if you're putting two quarterbacks in flex spots, which I, I personally think that's the best thing to do um, in this spot. Then, then you know, he'll get some ownership there. But I, I just don't see an overwhelming amount of ownership going to Jameis Winston. Chris Godwin, he should be pretty owned, and he should probably be – I think a popular way to go here is going to be, like, 
three to four Carolina players will be the chalk with one Tampa player. And I think that a lineup constructed of somewhat of Christian McCaffrey in your MVP spot with Cam Newton and Chris Godwin is probably going to be the way people build. So Godwin and Evans obviously in play when you know the upside of Mike Evans. The crazy thing here, though, is is you look and Mike Evans only had five targets, two catches, 28 yards. I mean, for a big time number one wide receiver, you expect more than that out of Mike Evans. So, you know, I think that sometimes what happens is when there's a huge loss like this, you have to reflect and say, okay, what are we good at and what are we trying to accomplish? We have weapons at the wide receiver spot. We don't have a running game. Carolina's defense, man, is going to be very, very, very owned here. They're going to be very owned. I, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to be different, if you're going to build five or ten lineups, build one of them and put Carolina's defense in the MVP spot. Because if he turns the football over five times, you will have a lineup constructed completely different than anyone else. So Godwin, only six targets and three receptions. They just didn't get going. Winston kept turning the football over. So, you know – Winston, Evans, Godwin, those are the guys to focus on. You know, you get deeper down here into O.J. Howard, okay. You know, as a flex play, fine. Um, but if you're going to, you know, for the MVP spots for me, I would stay away from from Winston. I would look at Mike Evans and Chris Godwin on the Tampa Bay side. I, you know, I guess if you want to take a look at, at a Peyton Barber, right, I'm okay with that. Maybe he sneaks in in the red zone. He gets a couple of goal line carries and he scores. But both these quarterbacks can run the football. And in a goal line situation, I don't think you're going to go to a running back if you, if you got the ball at the one or two yard line. They're going to – we've seen what Cam does. Jameis also likes to sneak the ball in the end zone as well too. So that's really it for me is I'm looking at, at, at those four guys really and really three of them, Winston, Evans, and Godwin. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I agree with you. And I definitely – I think that, um, you know, Tampa is going to have a bounce-back week, and they're going to at least put up some points, and the game's going to be competitive. You know, both teams really want to win this game. Um, you know, on the uh, <clears throat> on the Carolina side of things, I mean, you're looking at the obvious guys. I mean, it's really Cam Newton. It's, um, you know, Christian McCaffrey. Those are the guys you want to look at. Cam Newton last week, um, you know, he, he wasn't too bad. You know, he was 25 for 38. Uh, for two, 239 yards. So he didn't throw the ball bad. He just didn't throw no touchdowns. I mean, that he couldn't get the ball, you know, in the end zone, and he couldn't get the run game going. Three rushes for negative two yards. That's his game. You know, on a good day, he's going to have, you know, you'll take a 25 for 38 for 239 from Cam with two touchdowns, one touchdown maybe, and he'll rush on the ground for 10 rushes and 50 yards and a touchdown. So, I mean, he'll bounce back from this week, and I think it's going to be a good week against Tampa Bay who, you know, the for 49ers gave it to them, and their defense didn't look very good. Um, so I really like Cam this week. Um, you know, if you're going to play the Thursday through uh, Monday, especially if you're going to play just the Thursday only, you want to get at least a couple MVP spots with him. Um, and then you got McCaffrey. McCaffrey's a workhorse. You know, he doesn't have no real receivers that stepped up this week. You got McCaffrey, 19 carries, 128 yards, two touchdowns. Um, two rushing touchdowns, 10, free, uh, 10 catches on 11 targets for 81. He's going to be the guy that – it's going to be Cam and him. They're going to go just be kind of doing their thing together. Um, you know, 38 fans to points, you can't really count on, on the touchdowns for him to get two touchdowns a week. But this is the workload he's going to get. So I like McCaffrey a lot. Um, the wide receiver, man, that, that's why I talk about them so much because it, it's suspect. You got DJ Moore. Um, he ended up going um, – he's the guy that at least he's getting the looks. 6,200. Um, he went seven for 10. Uh, said he caught seven of 10 passes, 76 yards. He did lose a fumble, too. That's a little bit like, come on, bro. Like, don't lose a fumble. Um, you know, the other guy they got, Curtis Samuels, didn't do very much. Caught three or four passes, 32 yards. So, I mean, and then you got um, Greg Olson's questionable right now. Uh, with his back. So this is questionable for the game. Um, they're going to see if uh, he said he went to a, he, he went to a full practice Wednesday after being held out Tuesday. So looking like he'll play 5,200. We talked about him last week, and he definitely got the targets. Nine targets, only caught four of them for 36 yards. He's going to be a red zone um, option for Cam Newton. And him and McCa it's going to be really him, Cam Newton, and McCaffrey are going to be the three guys that you really want to look at this week. Um, that's really where I'm at with uh, the Panthers. You got anything else to add? Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan? I'm going to ride the Chris Hogan train. I, I know he only got one target last week and no catches, but 
Chris Hogan, everywhere he's been, he's been a playmaker. He's a playmaker in Buffalo that got him in New England. He's a playmaker in New England with their wide receiver situation, what it was last year. You know, they didn't have Julian Edelman to start the season. Then they lost right. Josh Gordon, right? Chris Hogan made plays. He made plays down the field, and he's always made plays from the slot. So got you. one target. You take a look got- at a couple of things, right? And, and I know I know that if you're going to win 200000 you're going to have to figure out how you're going to be different. There's a ton of entries here. Look at a couple of things. We talked about it last night with Goff. Goff had 39 pass attempts, only completed 23 of them, only for 186 yards, did get picked off, but did throw one pass and touchdown. Look at the weapons around Goff. Todd Gurley, Brandon Cooks, I mean, Cooper Cup, right? The guys, right. Robert Woods, the guys got, whose weapons are better, Jameis Winston's or Jared Goff's? Oh, definitely Jared Goff's. So, so you know, I think this game. Look, here's what you have. What you have to think about here. Who's the guy on the Carolina? Look, Ted Ginn Jr. was the guy for a long time when he was with Carolina. Like, throw Ted Ginn in a couple of tournament lineups and hope that of his two targets, one of them is an 80 yard bomb or a 60 yard bomb, right? Yeah. One one thing that I gotta look into is I gotta see how many snaps he got. I, I have to look that up and see see how much. I, I just don't think it matters right now. And, and that's my point. Like Ted Ginn, like Ted Ginn wasn't a 50 snap per game guy. Ted Ginn was maybe get it's, the big play, uh, right? Takes the one play. I get what you're saying. And and in this format, right, where there's only so many different ways you can build on FanDuel, it's 396,000 entries. I mean, right. how are you going to be different, right? You need that $5,000 player in your lineup to hit, right? So um, you have to take – you've got to take a swing. You can't just be like everybody else and build the same lineup everybody else builds if you're trying to take it down. If you're trying to cash, that's a different story. But if you're trying to take it down, who are you going to be different with? So you start with who are you going to be different with in your MVP spot, right? Can you be different in the MVP spot? And if you – or can you – is there a $5,000 player you can load in there to be different with how you build that by getting maybe two fifteen thousand dollars players in your lineup, right? So, you know, can you get – Mike Evans to go off in garbage time. Can you get Chris Godwin to get 10 targets in garbage time? Because I really think that I really think that in the fourth quarter of this game, that's where, where you're going to get points from Tampa Bay, I think, the fourth quarter. I just don't see how this game – it's got to stay close. Tampa Bay's defense has got to show up for Tampa Bay to win this game. There's not any scenario that I can see this game turning into a shootout situation. And in that in that in that type of game, we know Christian McCaffrey is going to dominate the touches. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and like I said, if, if Olsen is going to be on the floor on the field, he's going to get a ton of targets. So it's like, uh, man, I, I, I get what you're saying though with the cheap guy, just try to get him to sneak one in for you. Um, yeah, I mean that's really where I'm at. You got anything else to say? You get to go. No, that's it, man. All right. Hey, well, one thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning, and we did extend our NFL Luxury Box Special um, to this Sunday. Use promo code NFL2019 to get that. You get the rest of MLB. You get all NFL. Plus, you're going to get NBA for one price tag. It's a very good deal, so make sure to take advantage of that. And, um, yeah, man, we got a lot of good things going on, man. Check it out, DFSCheatSheet.com. And, hey, talk to you guys later. Peace out.